Sydney, how are we feeling tonight? Yes, love it. The cheers of people who don't love their mothers. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, I am recovering from a little bit of a cold, so this is gonna how I'm gonna sound for the next eight minutes. Um, so, a little bit about me. My name is Lena Wing, and I have a PhD in psychology from the University of New South Wales. Ooh, um, I study visual aesthetics, so that's what makes things pretty, what makes things beautiful. I specifically look at what makes nature beautiful. And I chose this field of study because I have one goal in life, and that is to become the hottest person alive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Supportive laughter, I assume. Uh, now some of you might be thinking, Lena, that is such a vain and unattainable goal. And you would be right. Yes, more supportive laughter. <laughs> and uh, that's why I have a backup goal, and that's to become the second hottest person alive. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I do have plans. I have plans for this, of course. Plan A is be hot. Just be born hot. Unfortunately, I am a short Asian woman with acne prone skin, so that chips out. <laughs> Plan B is plastic surgery. Now, I am a broke researcher, so that ship has also sailed. So that brings me to Plan C. Mind control everyone to think I'm the hottest person alive. Thank you, Prasad. <laughs> now, luckily, my research fits perfectly into this because I'm looking at why nature is pretty, all right? That's a universal feeling. Everyone thinks nature is beautiful. And if I can unlock that secret, maybe I too will be universally beloved like Hello Kitty. <laughs> now, at this point, I know what you're all thinking. Lena, your research has such great importance to society. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and that's why I drew a graph, because I am a scientist. So, <laughs> so on the y-axis, we have importance to society. And then we have cancer research, we have mental health research, both super important, both saving lives, okay? And uh, you might be thinking, Lena, where do you fit in all of this? Well, of course, I'll show you. Uh, double the importance. Uh, I'm looking at why nature is so slay. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and to that, what I have to say is, um, not all heroes wear capes. And uh, you're all very welcome for my contributions to science. Yes, women in STEM. Now, <laughs> Let's bring this back to my research goals. Mm, hot. Now, what I found was that I could mind control people. I could change what they found attractive, what they like and what they disliked. And I did that by hijacking something called visual adaptation. It's something that happens all the time in our brains, okay? And uh, there's two things you need for visual adaptation. You need one, prolonged exposure to a stimulus, and two, a change in perception or processing of a stimulus, okay? Scary. I'll go through these one by one. So what's prolonged exposure, all right? Uh, just means looking at something for a long time, okay? That's it, that's all it is. And uh, so say you sent that your ex, that risky DM at 2 a.m., hey, miss you and then you stare at it for the next five hours because you realize they've left you unseen. Um, well, that is quite a prolonged exposure. And that is gonna change how we feel about something. And that is my key to becoming hot. Okay? I guess we were envisioning it. All right, so to summarize visual adaptation, here's a stimulus. And on the right, we have a little like meter, pretty neutral. We don't feel a certain way about it. Um, and then after some exposure or visual adaptation, it undergoes an anime girl Sailor Moon transformation. <laughs> yes, this is very scientific, guys. Um, and then after that adaptation, it's a hot, yassified version of itself. The like meter is off the scale, and your brains are all anime weeaboos now. <laughs> we all love it, okay? 
Now, unfortunately, in my day job, I'm not paid to explain to people why I'm the hottest person on earth, much to my disappointment. I explain why nature is pretty, okay? And I look at the aesthetics of nature, and we've kind of gone through the aesthetics with visual adaptation, but where does the nature come in? Well, it comes with my fractals, my stimuli, all right? So what's a fractal? I hear no one asking. <laughs> oh, amazing. Such, such inquisitive audience. Um, uh, well, I prepared some earlier. Here is a triangle of me. Yes, the hottest threesome alive. And uh, with that triangle, I can make a bigger triangle of me. And then I continue again. I start to build a Sipinski triangle. What is that? What does that tell you? What does that mean? Well, it tells you that myself, like all scientists, are part of the Illuminati. <laughs> now, this is how you all find out. Uh, no, I'm just joking. It tells you that this is an example of a fractal. And a fractal is a pattern that looks the same when you zoom in, you zoom out. It's just triangles of me all the way down. And that is a property called self-similarity. And that's actually found everywhere in nature. So a fern's a really good example, uh, rivers, lightning, broccoli, they're all fractal. And so fractal kind of describes the geometry of nature, okay? <laughs> Very confusing. Um, it's pretty cool because special effects artists and game designers actually use fractals when they make these kind of natural looking landscapes. And it's used in movies like Star Trek, Guns of the Galaxy, Transformers, all super cool, super exciting. Fractals are so awesome. Uh, I also wear fractals, and uh, my fractals look like this. Ugh. Uh, no. Much less exciting, much less cool. Uh, but it kind of looks like something that happens when your TV loses signal. Yeah. But uh, what's important about this is I can control how n unnatural or natural it is. And so then I can look at the secrets as to why people like nature so much. Okay. And now we get to the fun part, the mind control. Yes, how to make me hot, okay. So what I found was that I can change what people like and dislike in two and a half minutes, that's all it takes. So I just expose people to some images and they start to like whatever it is that I showed them. So here's a fractal, this is what my participants would see. And they'd stare hypnotically at this for about two and a half minutes. And uh, eventually, they'd start to like whatever it is that I showed them. Now, some of you might be thinking, Lena, fantastic. I'm following along, I hear you. Uh, I have a crush, and uh, I want to be more attracted to them. So I'm going to expose myself to my crush. <laughs> <laughs> for about two and a half minutes. <laughs> First off, uh, please don't do that. <laughs> Secondly, that's assault. Uh, thirdly, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because I conducted my experiment under very controlled conditions, okay? So, I had my little experimenter in a room, trapped them in there. I turned off all the lights in the windows. They're a little scared now. And then I blasted their eyeballs with some fractals. And uh, then I made it so they couldn't move their little heads. <laughs> yes. Mm. Now, if you did this with your crush, <laughs> they would not find you more attractive. <laughs> no, instead, I think you would end up on these 7 o'clock news. <laughs> and uh, please do not mention me in your interview with Tracy Grimshaw. <laughs> Now, all of you are probably thinking, Lena, why is it important that you can change people's minds of fractals? Well, it tells you that maybe that's the secret to why we like nature, because the fact that I can use fractals to change what people like means it's a key ingredient. It also tells you that evil scientists like myself, part of the Illuminati, can do mind control. <laughs> and finally, it tells us that we shouldn't expose ourselves to our crushes. <laughs> Yes. Um, that's all from me, folks. The hottest scientists alive. Thank you all for coming.